Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Colonel Freeze here, casting another set of matchups in the PLSE2 tournament. Up here, the opponents in the top left-hand corner, the Blue Terran, is going to be Hatebit, otherwise known as Rourke Garnett, and for the rest of the game, I'm going to refer to him as Rourke. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the Red Terran, so a little bit of TVT action today. And the Red Terran is Kastaka, and I'm going to be referring to him as Tupravif, because that's what he's actually called. So, right now, both of these players are... Well, actually, that's a lot. Tupravif is rolling out with an SUV. He's not yet building a supply depot. Okay, there we go. So I don't know if this is an early scout or what, but he's bringing a peace offering of minerals to Rourke's base. And Rourke is going to respond in kind, moving out his own scout. Alright. Yep, they're just both scouting around trying to find each other. It looks like Rourke has guessed correctly. A second SCV out for two probably. You don't see that very often. And work is going to bring a peace offering as well. Not much production coming out of from two probably. He hasn't built any SCVs, but he is putting down a proxy barracks. So we're going to see some sort of proxy play from two probably today as he scouts up the ramp. Just checking to see if there's anything unusual. And he does not discover anything, and so withdraws. And it looks like we do have some SCV skirmishes going on across the map. And this SCV is gonna die. Bam! And... Two Probies is gonna escape. But he's still not making any new SCVs, so Rourke is going to take an Econ lead here. But the big worry for 2 Pravi, I'm sorry, the big worry for Rourke that he doesn't even know about yet, is this Proxy Barracks, so... We've got more SCVs coming in, taking control of the Zelnaga briefly, and dropping another Proxy Barracks. So we're going to see some very aggressive early play from 2 Pravi in this game. Looks like Rourke is going to go for the standard one racks expand that most Terrans are using. And yeah, we have three barracks, and it looks like he's going to proxy the supply depots as well. That's kind of weird. You don't usually see that. You know, what I would love to see is if two probably lifted those barracks up and floated them into the enemy base, but I don't think that's going to happen, seeing as they're already producing Marines. Still not that much SCV production from Tupraviv. Worker's gonna get that bunker. That's gonna seriously put a crimp in any sort of rush that uh, Tupraviv has. And he does scout it with the SCV. So he is aware that there's a bunker building right there. And he's going to build one at the bottom of the ramp in turn. That's kind of weird. This may turn into some sort of uh, World War One style TVT, where both sides dig in and uh, look at each other for 10-15 minutes. And uh, it's always a fun game to watch, and I say that with uh, every possible means of sarcasm that I have available. Rourke is going to add two barracks to bring him up to a total of three barracks, and continue SCV production. Let's take a look at the Econ tab. Oh, never mind, we do have an engagement. Two probably is going to try and run up this ramp. But that bunker is going to hold off those marines. And the hero SCV manages to survive barely. So the initial marine rush by two Pravif has been defeated. He's going to bunker up in that bottom bunker. And we're going to have a staring contest here for at least for a bit. Anyway, as I was saying, let's take a look at the econ tab. Yep, Warcarnet is heavily... Uh, out SCVing his opponent. However, it looks like. Yep. Two Pravif is managing to keep pace and even outgather him using his mules. And as a primarily Protoss player, 
I will volunteer the fact that mules are bullshit. And I can't stand it when I'm on three bases and a Terran is on two and he's bringing in more minerals than me because of his fucking mules. But that's neither here nor there. Hint, hint, blizzard. Let's see, Rourke is gonna put down an engineering bay and start getting those uh, plus one upgrades that are so important. In any sort of mirror matchup, whether it be TVT, PvP, ZVZ. Let's take a look back at his proxy. He's still just punching out Marines. Substantial amount, and he's going to finally expand as well. But now he's decidedly behind in SCVs. Anyway, let's go back to the production tab. Both of these guys are cranking out. Lork is investing in upgrades, he's getting combat shield, he's getting plus one weapons, and we have another engagement here. More marines trying to get up that ramp, but they are going to get hosed by that bunker. Yeah, that's nothing doing for two Pravif. And Rourke, with his superior SCV advantage, is going to pull a few SCVs to stand by to repair, and drop a couple more bunkers. So, this game looks to be a little bit of a stalemate here. It's really going to be which side gets either siege tanks or medevacs and does some drops to try and uh, break this stalemate. But it is interesting to note that whoever has the economy lead usually ends up uh, coming out on top in these type of situations. He's going to be able to build a bigger army faster, and unless he makes some poor decisions with his build order. And there we go, we do see a factory from two probably, so he must be reading my mind. And we may see some siege tanks here in the very near future. And Rourke is going to drop his own factory, but is substantially behind. So let's see what he goes with. Yep, he's going to get that tech lab. He's going to... Oh, well, we'll see what he produces in a minute. Meanwhile, up the ramp, we have three bunkers, two of them filled, more marines streaming in. Uh, factory about to finish, plus one weapons about to finish. Another barracks was added while I wasn't paying attention for two Pravif. And that one's gonna have a tech lab. So we may see some marauders as well. Two Pravif is starting to research his upgrades as well. He's getting plus one weapons while Rourke is working on plus one armor. And that's interesting, Rourke is opting not to do anything with the factory. He's going to go straight for the starport. We're probably going to see a uh, reactor switch between the factory and the starport here in a minute. But he did get that sensor tower up, so he is able to see virtually everything that's going on around his base. He sees the proxy... I don't know, shit fest that's going on directly outside. He sees the marines, he sees the factory, and he's going to see a siege tank popping out here momentarily. Yep, there it is. And so I'm gonna, there we go. Two probably is gonna research that siege tech and also build a third command center, hoping to try and take back some of that econ lead. But looking at the econ tab itself, he is 27 SCVs to 49 for Rourke Garnett. So Rourke is, eh, mostly ahead in terms of minerals, but you know, with those mule swings, it's uh, a lot more even than you might think. Let's see, stim pack getting gotten for work. I don't think that's proper English, but we'll live with it. He's floating around with that factory. He's got to see the siege tank, though, and realize that it's kind of a bad idea not to respond in kind. You know, on that ridge right there, siege tanks would be so effective. And we do have medevacs coming out, so... Either that's for some sort of ill-advised charge down the ramp into what's soon to be a ball of death, including siege tanks, or possibly try and break that stalemate by medevacking around into the proxy base, or even into two Pravif's mining on the other side of the map. So we will see. The first of those medevacs are coming out shortly. And the siege tanks do go into siege, and we do have an engagement as Warc pushes down. He's going to take out one siege tank, but he's not going to be able to get the other, and he lost quite a few marines. Two Pravif is going to attempt to push up, but he's losing marauders at a very rapid pace, and those SCVs are able to keep the bunkers alive. And that's the advantage of having such a high SCV count, is he can have SCVs sit there ready to repair, and not really lose out anything on mineral production. 
So we're going to see Tuprovif try and re-up with some more siege tanks. And Rourke, I gotta believe, is going to start getting his own siege tanks here in a minute, but he's a little bit behind on the tech. He's going to need to research the actual siege ability. And meanwhile, he's adding more medivacs, he's adding more marines. I uh, should be researching more upgrades here in a minute, as they both have an obscene amount of minerals, both floating around a thousand minerals. Uh, Rourke Garnett sitting at about 500 gas. And not really spending those minerals too well. I mean, I don't understand why Tuprov isn't making SEVs, isn't making constant marine production if that's what he really wants to make. And judging by his army, well, what's left of his army, that's what he's planning on doing. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're all enjoying the uh, benefits of watching a mirror matchup. Ah, oh, but look at this. War Garnett, unbeknownst to us, has loaded up a bunch of Marines in his medevac, and we are going to see a drop here into Provius main momentarily. And it's, uh, it's a little weird to call it a main. It was his first base, but it's not like any of his tech or his production buildings are in it. However, it will be a significant blow to his income to lose that. And we see a missile turret going up, more siege tanks, more marines streaming in as both players attempt to spend that money. And here we go, that medevac is going to move up into 2 Provif's main, and he's going to drop marines. And 2 Provif has no units whatsoever nearby that can respond to this. And he's just going to lose a whole mess of SCVs. Let's take a look at the uh, units kill tab. That's 9 workers killed right there. And we have an engagement pushing up the ramp is too Pravi, but he is getting entirely hosed by those marines who are now streaming down and just getting eaten up by the siege tanks. So both sides here in the at the front lines are not able to do anything except pound on each other. With almost no t gain of territory whatsoever. And uh, Rourke did have a couple siege tanks on that ridge, but they were unable to do anything really. Meanwhile, back at the main, Rourke Garnett is mopping up uh, what was left of the main. Hopefully he's going to move down to the natural shortly. Not really doing much. Though I have to believe he was focused more on dealing with the assault up his ramp. But he does have the siege tank now, pounding on those units below him. Taking advantage of that range, taking advantage of that line of sight, and using his scans wisely to be able to get the, uh, that line of sight on his opponent. And here we go, War Garnett moving into the natural. More SCVs, more mules are going to fall. And it, still no response from Tuk Ravi. He has no units anywhere near this side of the map. So pulling up the units kill tab again. Oh, that's not that. There we go. 22 workers now killed by War. And another command center is going to fall. Uh, let's switch to the army tab here real quick, and that is also not the army tab. Here we go. For work on it, he has two siege tanks, eight medevacs, and 52 marines. Two Pravif has two siege tanks, seven marauders, and 15 marines. So he's behind now in... in tech, in resources, in econ, and in army strength, so... And work on it is gonna entirely bypass, really the only place that... Two Pravif has left mining, so that's a little bit of a bad call. But he is going to drop here, so I'm not sure what was on his mind, but... We're finally going to see a response from Two Pravif. He's going to move Marauders and Marines across the map to respond to this. And War Garnett is just kind of hanging out. I don't know what else he's working on. Yeah, we're just not seeing any action from him. But he is working on plus three upgrades. That's uh, third command center for Wark. And here we go, we're gonna have an engagement. Wark on it, pushing up against uh, two Pravif. Those Marines are getting gunned down, only Marauders left for two Pravif. That medevac is doing a heck of a lot of help. And we're gonna have one hero Marine left, one Marauder down, two Marauders down. And there goes the SCV, so. This hero Marine is able to fend off that assault. 
They continue to do damage to that uh, command center. Meanwhile, back at the siege lines, we still have three tanks, one not in siege, a few marauders, a few marines, and a whole mess of marines for Rourke Garnett, joined now by siege tanks. And that one marine is gonna be boated slow slowly to safety as another response for two Provius moves up. But here we go, two full boats of med or I'm sorry, two full medivacs of marines are gonna move in and attempt to finish the job on that command center. More marines streaming in now, and if you just look at the supply tab, you can see that Royal Carnet has 166 supply, two Pravif is down to 81. So that's not good. And that attack force is joined by the Hero Marine now, and they're gonna roll in. And Stimpak is gone, the mule goes down, that small force from two Pravif is gonna go down shortly. And there they go. This command center is gonna fall. Although, I'm not sure why that was the priority, considering it wasn't doing any mining whatsoever. And we did have an engagement up here that I have missed, so I'm gonna pause that. Or, sorry, I'm gonna rewind. And that looked like it might have been decisive. So, while Rourke Arnett is rolling up into that command center, Yep, here goes two Pravi if he's rolling up the ramp. He's got his siege tanks, they're driving right in, but they are getting hosed by these bunkers, these marines. And those siege tanks on the ridge are doing tons of damage. And that is going to basically be it for two Pravi's army. The siege lines are almost entirely broken. Rook Garnet is gonna, I have to believe, roll out right now, try and finish up those siege tanks. And he does. So two Pravif in really big trouble now. And Rourke Garnett finally breaking out of that, uh, that siege of his base. There's the GG from two Pravif. And Rourke Garnett, the blue Terran playing as Hatebit, is going to be the winner of game one of this set. So not the most exciting game, but uh, seeing some good mechanics from Rourke Garnett. And if you guys stay tuned, we'll have game two of this set momentarily.